Detroit is the third team on the clock, and these are the picks that they have. Mock to them. Uh, first pick, Jeff Ullman, 22-year-old switch hitting, ready throwing batter, uh, pitcher, sorry, um, comes in with two fastballs, four seam, two seam, changeup, slider, and a 12-6 curveball, a potential 61 overall from Indiana, not too far away. Good stamina. His hits per nine is going to need work. His K per nine is okay. His walks per nine is solid. Uh, we'll give up the long ball, which kind of coincides with the hit per nine. Uh, clutch, mm, he needs to try to really avoid getting base runners on as his control is just is not there. Velo is good. Break is also good. Not much of a fielder. His arm is all right. And with the bat in his hand, unless he's bunting, don't swing. Uh, 56 durability, so he might have some injury issues uh, coming into uh, the minors in hell, even the majors if he ever makes it that far. Next up is second baseman Joaquin Merced, 58, uh, 52 overall, 18 year old potential, 18 years old C potential, Floridian. He's okay with the bat in his hands, I guess, for a minor leaguer at 18 years old. He, he might outlast some guys with strictly durability. His fielding is just not really there. Doesn't throw very hard. Does not. Uh, it's not very accurate. Rather than be accurate if you're not going to be strong armed, especially at second base, because second base, you're not really making a whole lot of, like, hard, long throws, you know. The shortstop is right there. It's an easy toss to your right. The first baseman is the easy toss to your left. Like, nothing really to... You don't really need to throw all that hard. Um, 67 speed, though, so that, there's that. Um, he's definitely a project. Next up is Sam Hayward, first baseman. And I don't know if y'all looking at the upper right-hand corner. That power is major league ready. As you can see, first baseman, Georgian. Uh, Georgian, holy smokes, I can't speak today. His contact is not really there. He's got some bop, but his bop is mostly lefty bop, so he's probably a platoon hitter for the majority of his career, unless he can really, really up his righty game. Vision, discipline, just not there. Clutches, I mean, maybe every once in a while he might come up with something. Uh, not a bunner. His durability is good, good enough. Um, arm strength not there. He's a first baseman. We don't concern ourselves with that. Um, as we don't know if he has a secondary position, he probably does not. Uh, stealing is a 63, which doesn't really mean much when you're only at 46 speed, but I've seen crazier things. Uh, and is not a pitcher at all, as the overwhelming majority of these guys are. I really got to remember, these guys are not Shohei, Shohei Otani or Babe Ruth or even Brandon McKay for that matter. All right. Next up, they got him taking uh, Jaime Gonzalez, a second baseman, 20 years old, righty righty. And as you can see, he does have the contact and the vision along with probably the speed and the stealing to be major league ready a lot sooner than his potential is suggesting again that is major league bat worthy right there for contact especially as a second baseman um his vision is definitely there he doesn't hit for much power um clutch discipline he's not a bunter he's not that fast it'd be nice if he were a little faster but you know 68 we'll take it uh, fielding is he's gonna i see why his potential is a d his fielding is just not there if he can ever become even a 50 rated uh fielder i think he'll be perfectly fine um you know with a solid career for a couple years you know but he's 20 years old so that depends on when he comes up next up we got relief pitcher rob Patton, uh, the lefty lefty hurler of two fastballs a four and two seamer slider uh and a curveball coming at 78 miles an hour. So he's definitely got a, a pretty large delta in, um, in terms of the uh, spit pitch speed between his hardest pitch and his slowest pitch. Uh, his hit per nine is solid, right? We, we like it. His K per nine, meaning he's he's not gonna get, he might, he's gonna give up some hits, but not a ton, but he's also not gonna get you out. Um, walks per nine and his control are okay. Um, home runs for he's not going to give up. He'll, he'll give up home runs at an average clip. Fielding, I mean, we don't concern ourselves too much with that, um, really, unless you're a starter. Like, really, when it comes to fielding, the it's a bonus from a pitcher. Um, his arm strength is good. Accuracy, eh, all right. D 
don't put a bat in his hand. His durability is at a 64, but he's a reliever, so unless he's like trying to throw his arm out, he should be fine. Next up, we got relief pitcher Barry Smith from Maine, 19 years old, lefty lefty. His primary pitch is the slider, though his four seam is the harder of the two pitches, and he mixes in a 12 6 curve for good measure. Stamina, I mean, we're going to skip over that. Let's be real. Um, they're relief pitchers. It, wherever their stamina lies, you kind of pitch them as to that. You know, it kind of plays into their role. Um, hit per nine, K per nine is okay. It's all right for a 19-year-old minor leaguer. Uh, walks per nine is decent. Clutch, do not put him in there in a high or even medium leverage situation. Control, decent. We can live with that. Like it to be better, but we can live with that. Velocity is, is, is good. Fielding, yeah, yeah, no. Even if you gave him two gloves, he couldn't field it. Um, arm strength is good. And don't put a bat in his hand, but his durability is, is, is pretty damn good. 80. Lastly, we choose, we uh, look at Rafael Mota. 64 potential, 22 lefty, lefty. A lot of lefties going in this. Uh, 30s for contact, better against righties than lefties, um, which is usually the case for lefty batters. His vision is going to need work, obviously. Durability is solid. He is a pole hitter through and through. Uh, fielding is all right. It'd be nice if his arm could kind of kind of balance the fact that he doesn't field work for damn, and his speed would be nice if it were higher as well. You, you're Despite the fact he does hit righties slightly better, his hot cold zones are better for lefties, which makes no sense. If I had to give this team a grade, I'd say it's about a C plus. Now, if you happen to disagree with that assessment, by all means, let me know in the comment section down below. But in the meantime, we are going to get to the Reno Aces game, and we will be player locking in with JB. But Kauskis, the ace pitcher, I believe he's the ace pitcher of the you know, Aces, throws the usual four version two of pitches, the four seam, the slider, the changeup, and either a curveball or a two seamer. He has a two seamer as his fourth pitch. Gets a pitch over for strike number one. Facing Nick Ahmed, we will go pitch by pitch, and the fastball is fouled off to the right field side. We will do 0 and 2. Mike Ahmed, no relation to our Nick Ahmed the Majors. And the slider is hit to right field. Easy, easy play for the right fielder. I will admit, I don't remember everybody's name in the minors. It's hard enough trying to get remember guys in the majors. But you know, we may do it what we we've got. Alright, Jack Larson, the next batter up. And oh, he puts a charge in this one high to right field. It is going to be run down. For the second out of the inning, only four pitches in. Here's Joe Dietrich. Hey, 341 thus far in this young Triple A season. Two seamer misses below the knees. One pitch. Uh, gets the changeup in the corner. I'm a little shocked by that. Sometimes these umpires are just not willing to give us the corner. That bitch, just that's like the ball. that. Though he probably was off enough that you can make the case that it just wasn't a very good pitch. And fastball fouled off. Foreseen. We'll do two and two. Two two pitch. Ooh, kind of floated this one. It's a changeup hit the shallow left. Wow, that one hung up there a long time, but they're able to get the out, and we're able to get out of this one. Julio Rodriguez, the prize outfielder alongside Jerry Kelman. Batting up next, we'll see a miss at a four-seamer, coming in at 96. But Kauskas does throw hard, at least relatively hard. I mean, I know nowadays guys are throwing 100-mile-an-hour sinkers. Four-seamer gets over for 95. Oh, two pitch looking to punch him out. Ooh, the slider gets hung up there. Hit the left center field. It's going to bounce. And I think it got over the wall. Hey, they're going to call it a ground rule double. We'll take a look at that one once more. 
Julio Rodriguez, definitely a young man with some pop. And it took literally one hop and got over into the home run field grass. Whatever the hell you want to call it. But that's All right. Jordan Cowan, 318 average. Cowan. It's the pitch. Change up gets over for strike. Number one. Cowan, two home runs. 10 RBIs. And he tries to get him to chase upstairs. Can't connect. Two seamer. No, no. 95, though. It's got pretty good movement on it. Next pitch. Slider. Okay, he's really trying to work him inside. Trying to really jam and prevent him from extending his arms. But he lets one out over the plate. Hit in the center. And the throw to the plate is way offline. So... Tacoma takes a 1-0 lead. Take a look at that again. Yeah, that change up caught way too much of the upper half of the zone. Jake Shiner up next. Check over the first. This pitch, ooh, in the stretch. 92 on a two-seamer. Next pitch again. This ball is slapped the right field. Bounces. Get scooped by the right fielder. And throw it in. Brian O'Keefe up next, 115 average, grounded in third, over the second, back up first, 6-4-3, the double play. Here's Connor Lean, six RBIs but not a single home run to his name, 226 average. Bukowski's only 20 pitches. Through an inning and two thirds, so he's pitching pretty damn efficiently. And with a slider like that, yeah, you can get swings like that too. Slider once more. This one with a little bit harder velocity, coming in at 87. Looking to punch him out. Ooh, can't get the outside corner on the two seam. I see he tried to get that to float back over the zone. Looking inside, gets him swing on the slider. Ace is able to get out of that one. Josh Morgan. I am not sure who he is. He does have nine RBIs though, so he's got to be at least a decent player. We get a little bit of miscommunication between the pitcher and the. Catcher sure seemed like it as that two seamer was way off. One and oh, looks from an outside pitch again. And that one pulls back over the middle, but it's grounded the second. Throw over to the first. We got one away. Mike Ahmed. The first base is number four. As far as when we might see Bakaskis as he gets the slider high and inside for strike one. There's a very good chance we could see him this year. Um, it's more than likely not going to be until later in the year, like much later in the year. Like he doesn't. Ooh, two seamer makes him see him miss. He's not the kind of prospect that seems to be ready right now, and we're just kind of holding off on him. He does need work, but when you've got a slider that dives like that, damn, 85 miles an hour, gets a second punch out. You can see seven inches of break, 1897 rotations per. Meter, I think that's RPMs. Yeah, you think I would know this on a slider? You know that, that that's disgusting. And to think they're thinking of moving the pitching mound back six inches to a foot. Um, I guess to maybe kind of accommodate for I don't know guys swinging for the fit. I don't know. Maybe they want guys to be able, offensive guys to be able to hit a little better. But listen. When everybody's worried about exit velo and, and and launch angles, which don't get me wrong, those things do have merit, but they can't be the end all be all. Like you still need to be able to bat on ball. And thus far, Bukowskis has only given up a single run. But Joe Dietrich, as we have tied the ball game up with one. The second baseman. Second baseman Dietrich. Joe Dietrich. And uh -huh. watches the inside four seamer for one ball, ball one. Strike. 
Again, Bukowskis is looking like one of those September call-up kind of guys. It's a pop-up to the third base side, not too far from the home plate. It'll be caught for the first out. Again, he'll probably be a guy we call up in September if he's healthy, if he looks like he's improving, if we're completely out of the postseason race. Change up low and away, ball one. Easy to spit on that one. Julio Rodriguez already able to double. Change up, okay. I don't think Bacalcus exactly understands how he wants to pitch to Rodriguez. I know he doesn't want to throw him anything. And I guess he'll take that. The four-seamer rising in the zone gets a pop-up in the right shallow field. We're out number two. Now batting, designated hit, Jordan Cowan. Jordan Cowan, one for one. No, that's down. Ball. That's down in the zone. Looking right now. Getting a swing and miss again. Nope, it's a changeup. This time below the knees. Yeah, he's got pretty good break on his pitch. At least decent break on his pitches. This one hit to short. Over the first. Easy. One, two, three inning. For J.B. Bukowski. Jake Shiner got a single in the second. One of the few hits that Bukowskis has given up. And first pitch is hit in the right field. Got himself a leadoff single here to start the second half of this ball game. Take a look at that again. Yep, fastball. A meatball pretty much. You don't want to keep throwing pitches there. Let's take a look again. Only four, five, and six. The four, five, six are the only ones with hits. One, two, three, seven, eight, nine. Nothing to show for the, today's ball game. And two seamer in there coming in at 94. He took just a tad bit off the bat. Okay, 113 average. Glance over at first. Stretch and ooh, pull down the line. Oh. Almost clocks the ball boy. Hold on, watch out, bro. Put your hands up or something. Oh, two pitch is a two-seamer hit high in the center field. It's going to be caught. And we've got one out. Dude, that's Dalton Varsho. It doesn't help a lot of these guys don't have names on their jerseys, which is really weird. Slider in there, strike one, kind of high. That's not a position where you want to throw a lot of high sliders. Granted, he does throw sliders harder than most. The four-seamer kind of cut back over the plate. Strike number two fouled off. And we go 0-2. Ooh, what a damn pitch. Hell of a slider. Gets the corner. J.B. Lukowski's three strikeouts. That one. Woo. From armpit to the mid-thigh, you're going to have a problem with that one. Josh Morgan up next. Now and uh, chill out there, Bacascus. Can't get the low zone. Two-seamer. And this one is broken back. Hit to the first base. He's going to step on the bag through five. It is a 1-1 one -one ball game. Take a look at that again. He doesn't have a cutter, but he still saw it off that bat. Leading off for Chicago, the first base number All right, Nick Ahmed. Not Nick Ahmed. Mike Ahmed watches the four seamer. And looks like a changeup hit back to the right side of the pitching mound. Easy toss the first. Gets him out by at least two strides. Not exactly sure who our free agents are and who we would even, you know, send down. When Bukowskis might be ready for Seymour over for strike one. Um, he'll probably more than likely be one of those pitchers that will get called up and just stuck in the bullpen as a long reliever. Maybe get a spot start here and there for the month of September. Maybe August, depending on how far out we are. Two-seamer. 
in there for ball number one. And the Rockies have beaten us in two straight games. So, I mean, they're still like five games behind us. And we get the second out to, th out to third. So, you know, just giving you guys a little bit of, you know, my thought on him thus far. He does officially no have a quality three. start here Second in Triple A as he has Joe. reached the sixth inning. Dietrich. <laughs> Joe Dietrich. I mean, he's hit 55 pitches, now 56. Gets the two-seamer over for strike number two. You know, when you're only throwing about 10 pitches an inning, you can go a long time. Um, his stamina is pretty pretty relatively average. I think it's in the, like, 70s or something like that. And he gripped that fastball a little bit too much. That's why it's ball one. Tries it again. The four-seamer smoked the left field. Running back. At the warning track, we make the catch through six, still tied at one. You know, and you know maybe if we want to move on from Madison Bumgarner, though his contract leaves a lot to be. I don't know how how many teams are really gonna want him. Rodriguez, Julio Rodriguez, one for two. Ooh, slider. Get strike number one. Yeah. Change up now in there for strike number two. Is he going to pitch him backwards and try to jam him with the heat? No, change up ground to the third. The throw across the diamond. Got him. Listen, when you got a pitcher like this that can get through, through two and through the seventh inning, you make the reliever's job a lot easier than not ask to throw too many more pitches. Than they, you know, may typically do in an inning. Wow, that one just grazed the bottom of the zone. He got the strike call. Cow went on an eight-game hit streak. It'll actually be extended to nine if they were just if the damn graphics seem to update. All right, Cow and down 0-2, and he is not pleased. I don't blame you. The umpires are blind with check swings this year. Yeah, just saying. Two pitch and woo! So we're gonna mess it a two seamer. Fourth strikeout. You know, you'd think if a guy went this long, he was striking out a bunch of guys. Usually, it's either you just striking out a bunch of guys, or you're just pitching efficiently that you're pitching into your defense. Now Jake Shiner, two for two. Jake Shiner. Slider gets in there for strike number one. For one pitch. Slider in about the same spot. I don't know how you don't call that one. And chopper back up the middle, right past the legs of Bukowski's in the center. They get a two out base runner. Take a look at that again. Oof, change up. Just cut back over the zone. And this looks like that'll be the last gentleman he will face. Your attention, please. And we will call on. Kevin Ginkle, who has a .66 ERA and a 15 to 3 strikeout ratio. Lefties do hit 300 over him. He's pretty average in his per nines, except he'll give up a fair amount of walks. Runner at first, two outs. Stolen base by Shiner. And he pops up. Wallace strikes out. Fairchild flies out. Single by Mr. Beer. And if you this choice, will end it. Pop up, fly out. We get a pitching change to Matt Grace, and a strikeout ends it. As we're still up one, Graveman on the mound. Single by Varsho. He scores from first by via Andy Yerzy. We go up by two. It's a big insurance run, and a pop-up will end it. Matt Grace, or somebody, ah, Blake Walston, gentleman you saw yesterday. We'll have to close this one out. Gets a strikeout. Spike coming up a single, and a ground out, and we have won three to one. All right, in the coming seconds, there will be the next mock draft for the Boston Red Sox. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed that one. Let me know what you think of anything you saw in this video. Peace out. Well, not peace out. Yeah, I'll go see the next one. The next mock draft coming up in like two seconds. All right, the Boston Red Sox are up next, and these are the players that they're a mock to take. Uh, a, a bit more diverse than the other two teams we've seen. 
Um, as you can see, his first pick was Emil Barrios, lefty throwing, left-handed uh, batting center fielder, 93 potential. He's got, he's, you know, solid with the contact, or okay with the contact. Power, not really there. Um, he's got any potential, so that can, you know, jump up depending on training, you know, how he trains in the offseason and in the uh, in-season. Uh, vision is damn good. That's major league worthy. Uh, discipline is there. He's got some clutch to his game. Uh, bunting, eh, I mean, he's he's going to be playing for an American League team unless he gets traded. Um, durability is definitely up there. Again, he'll probably outlast some guys just off the strength of being able to be on the field. Fielding is okay. Arm strength is not really there for a center fielder. He's 20 years old, though. His speed, he's got some speed. He will, he will do some damage on the base paths. He's more of a push hitter than a pull hitter as a lefty, which... I mean, hey, maybe he'll push some balls down the line around Pesky's pole, you know, depending on when he comes up. All right, Carmen Valenzuela is next, the catcher from Mexico, which is interesting given his last name. Um, he seems to be kind of average across the board as far as hitting uh, better against righties than lefties. Um, he definitely can bunt. As, um, we don't know if he plays another position, but he's a lefty batter. Um, let's see, durability is, you know, solid, uh, fielding is going to need work if he ever wants to become any sort of viable, uh, you know, major leaguer, um, speed, not there, and he doesn't really, of course, most of these guys don't pitch, so, it is what it is, seems to be better against the lefties as he, uh, he'll, he'll, he'll pull on it very easily, um, as you can see, uh, red on the entire inside track there. Next up is Howard Chapman, no relation to Aroldis, a Floridian, 20 years old, 6'3", 221. He has borderline starter stamina at 64. Um, his hit per nine, and K per nine is all right. He's 20 years old, so he's got room to grow. His home runs per nine, he's pretty much not going to give up the long ball. Um, pitching clutch is all right. Control is going to need some work, despite him only throwing three pitches. Velocity is solid break is all right um don't really put a bat in his hand his durability is is kind of eh but when you're only pitching an inning or so you know it's not really too much of a concern throws two fastballs of the fat forcing and sinker variety and mixes in a breaking ball of a slider at 85. eduardo rosado no not i almost said Edu <laughs> uh, 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 eddie rosario but you know here we are um D potential shortstop from Rhode Island, so he's not going very far from home. Um, pull hitter, righty throwing, switch hitter. Um, not the best hitter, but he's only 18, so he's got a lot of room to grow. Durability at 90, again. Uh, when you're able to stay on the field, you know, you're able to play more. Um, fielding is not there, so I don't know why he's a shortstop. Um, speed is okay. Um, doesn't do anything too great. He's a pull hitter at that not a pitcher. Tommy Sumner, the next reliever they have chosen. 77 potential, so he's not too shabby. Again, another borderline starter uh, slash long reliever um, in an emergency situation. Um, hit per nine at 59. K per nine at 63, so he'll be able to get some get a, a, a decent amount of guys out um, if he's able to control the ball. As you can see, control and walks per nine at 21 and 37, respectively. Pitching clutch at a 53, so he's kind of average. Uh, velocity is definitely up there, though. Throwing two fastballs of a four-seam and two-seam variety. Mixing in the uh, off-speed changeup and the slider at 86. Arm is, okay. Arm is good. Not a fielder. You really don't expect much from relievers all that much. Anyway. And not a hitter. He's a reliever, so we don't worry about that kind of thing. All right, next up is Jackson Jackson Freeze, I'm going to say Freeze. We're going to stick to that. Uh, Washington born, 22 year old, 6'4, 196, an extreme pull hitter. And as you can see by those boxes up there, he pretty much doesn't have a weakness in his game, but I don't know why he's a deep potential. Why is his contact not nearly as high as it probably could be? Um, you know, in almost near 40 across the board, contact of power. Vision is going to need a lot of work. Doesn't bunt. Durability is, he's definitely going to need to work with a 
uh, you know, maybe a yoga instructor or something, get his durability up, fielding at a 40 for second base. This is that's not good. I mean, you can get by, but like if you don't have anything else in the calling card, like you're really just kind of just there. You're one body. Uh, 69 arm strength, 58 accuracy. Speed is okay. Probably the second or third best pick on this team. 